This video covers the higher level content that's part of B 3.1 on gas exchange, particularly the transport of respiratory gases. And here's kind of the hero of this topic. This is a protein called hemoglobin. So hemo referring to blood, it's chock full in our red blood cells. And this is a protein that can transport four oxygen molecules. So we're gonna notice that it's got some polypeptides, okay? That's what these squiggly marks are. These are four polypeptides. And in the middle of each polypeptide is a heme group. So I've got one, two, three, four heme groups, and each of those can carry one of these oxygen molecules. Now, when an oxygen molecule binds to one of these heme groups, it causes a conformational change, a change in the shape of this hemoglobin molecule, and that increases its affinity or attraction to oxygen. So every time an oxygen binds here, the hemoglobin becomes more and more attracted to oxygen and increases that affinity for oxygen. Now this is reversible, so yeah, oxygen doesn't permanently bind to that hemoglobin. It can be removed from the hemoglobin, and we'll talk more about that, but it's important to understand that the oxygen binding causes a conformational change, which affects hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen. Now, we're going to be talking a lot about these diagrams called oxygen dissociation curves. So they look like this. I draw one here. And dissociate means to kind of come apart, to get rid of, to separate, okay? And this is all going to be driven by what we call partial pressure. So down at the bottom of this graph, you can see that this is the partial pressure of oxygen. Well, partial pressure is the pressure exerted by one gas in a mixture of gases. So remember that the air that we're breathing is not pure oxygen. It's made up of nitrogen and carbon dioxide and other gases that contribute to this mixture. However, hemoglobin and its affinity for oxygen is really only affect, not only affected, but is highly affected by the partial pressure of just oxygen. So what we're really looking at here in these oxygen dissociation curves is how does the presence of just that oxygen in the mixture affect hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen? So let's first talk about hemoglobin um, in adults, okay? So under very low partial pressures of oxygen, that hemoglobin is going to dissociate with those oxygens. It's gonna give up those oxygens to the tissue surrounding it. And that makes sense. If there's not a lot of oxygen, those tissues really need it. Plus, that hemoglobin has a very low affinity or attraction for oxygen under low oxygen environments. So I'm gonna have a low affinity for oxygen when the partial pressure of oxygen is low, and hemoglobin will have a high affinity and be completely saturated for, with oxygen when those partial pressures are high. Now, it's not a linear curve, it's sigmoidal in shape, so it's going to look a little bit like this. And this is our typical oxygen dis dissociation curve for adults. Now, fetal hemoglobin is a little bit different. So if we think about how this is actually working, that baby, that fetus, needs to have hemoglobin that can steal the oxygen away from the mother's blood. That's how it's getting that oxygen. And so fetal hemoglobin is going to have a much higher affinity for oxygen. What does that mean? Well, that means that at the same partial pressure, that fetal hemoglobin will be more saturated than the mother's hemoglobin. So that oxygen dissociation curve is going to shift to the left. So a higher affinity means that it is going to shift the oxygen disassociation curve to the left, right? So again, at the same partial pressure, that mother hemoglobin, the adult hemoglobin, has a lower affinity for oxygen 
and therefore less saturation, then at that same partial pressure for the fetus, that fetus is gonna have, or the fetal hemoglobin will have a much higher association for oxygen. And so, or <laughs> affinity for oxygen. And that's how that fetal hemoglobin is able to steal away that oxygen from the mother's hemoglobin. Now, even within adult tissues, that hemoglobin can have different affinity for oxygen based on environmental conditions. Let's consider this scenario where nearby cells are doing something that requires a lot of energy, something like muscle contractions. That need for energy is going to kick up the rates of cell respiration. And the more cell respiration that's happening, the more carbon dioxide that gets produced. Carbon dioxide drives down the pH, it acidifies its environment, and that's going to cause hemoglobin to convert into a different form called carbinohemoglobin. Carbinohemoglobin has a lower affinity for oxygen. Okay, so just like the fetal hemoglobin has a higher affinity and that's going to shift the curve to the left, a lower affinity for oxygen is going to shift the curve to the right. And so what that means is that it's giving up that oxygen at a higher partial pressure. So under normal circumstances, here's my oxygen disassociation curve. When there is a high carbon dioxide content in the environment, that is going to shift my curve to the right. Okay, so what does that actually mean? And let me make sure <laughs> that we understand. These are both at 100% up here. Just my drawing is a little messy. Okay, so what does that mean? That means at the same partial pressure of oxygen, hemoglobin has a much lower affinity for oxygen um, than it does when there's less carbon dioxide. So it's giving up its oxygen at a much lower a uh, higher partial pressure. It doesn't take as much of a drastic change in partial pressure to get rid of that oxygen. And that is something called the Bohr shift. It's great for tissues, like let's say actively um, moving muscles that are doing a lot of cell respiration. Okay, it reduces hemoglobin's affinity for oxygen and therefore it's gonna give up that oxygen a lot more easily and that is perfect because cell respiration needs oxygen. So this is all about form and function. The function is we need those cells to get oxygen as quickly and as efficiently as possible. Well, what's the form? What's the adaptation? The adaptation is that the hemoglobin will have a lower affinity for oxygen and give up that oxygen at a much um, higher partial pressure than it normally would if there wasn't carbon dioxide. Okay, so let's sum things up. You will likely have to draw or annotate or identify different lines um, in what's called an oxygen dissociation curve. So we need to have percent saturation of hemoglobin up here um, on our y-axis. So it ranges anywhere from zero to 100%. And then partial pressure of oxygen, um, it's important that we label that, over here on our x-axis. Normal adult hemoglobin is going to have a curve that looks something like this. And so what is this saying? Well, it says as the partial pressure falls, so over here at low partial pressures, there's not very much oxygen attached to hemoglobin because its affinity has dropped, okay? So that's normal adult hemoglobin. In high CO2 environments, that's our Bohr shift, we're going to notice a shift to the right, okay? So this is going to move our curve to the right, and that's because it has a lower affinity for heme or lower affinity for oxygen. So at the same partial pressure in a high CO2 environment, there's going to be less oxygen attached than in a normal CO or normal environment um, because we've lowered that affinity. In fetal hemoglobin, that is going to shift our curve to the left, and that's because fetal hemoglobin has a much higher affinity for oxygen. So that's going to look something like this. 
okay, where at the same partial pressure, the fetal hemoglobin is going to have a much higher affinity for oxygen than the maternal hemoglobin. So again, it's all about form and function. What do we need these hemoglobin molecules to do? Under normal circumstances, we need hemoglobin to give up its oxygens when there's relatively little oxygen in the blood. We need that to change when there's a lot of carbon dioxide in the blood. We need that to give it up even easier, decrease that affinity. And again, for fetal hemoglobin, we need that fetal hemoglobin to be able to steal that oxygen from the mother. So again, all about form and function here with the transport of respiratory gases.